This year is the year of heat. With records being set across the world, we need to talk about how we can get our garden through a hot, warm summer. So today's video, we're going to be looking at the difference between sun stress and heat stress and how we can get our plant through to the end of the year and prevent it in the future. So first off, we are going to start with sun stress because the very easy solution to this is shade cloth or providing shade through planting around that space. It means intercropping very tall, sacrificial plants or using a shade cloth material. Now sun stress is very specific and it's actually a blistering of the leaves. It's usually circular in nature and has a very uniformed pattern. What I will say about the burning of the leaves is that it is a yellow or white burn and is not brown or black. There's a big difference there. And in some cases with things like zucchini or melons, you may see a physical blistering or an air pocket of sorts underneath the leaves almost looks like powdery mildew, but it's not. This is from sun stress. And the utilization of shade cloth will actually help to prevent this or ensure that the new growth does not have this issue. This is not fixable. Once the leaves are damaged, they are permanently damaged and there's no coming back from it. So the most you can do is try to protect the plant in the future. If you're wondering if it's time to maybe restart that area with something different, the rule of thumb is if more than 30% of the plant is damaged, then you are beyond the uh, repair zone and you might want to start off fresh. That is just the nature tax is 30% and you're safe anything above that and we're kind of in a danger territory. Heat damage is actually pretty obvious when it comes up. However, it can look like a few different things like curling or drooping leaves. Now this droop can be a very dehydrated looking droop in the case of things like melons I find or squash in particular tends to have like a droopy look to the actual physical plant almost as though it's um, lacking water all the way to more of a permanent morphological droop which you can see on things like peppers or tomatoes. Now the next thing you will see is curling of the leaves and this is often mistaken as pesticide damage but that is not the case. The plant's way of cooling itself down. So if you're seeing a curling or a cupping this is a sign of heat stress. The other heat stress symptoms is actually the dropping of blossoms or after they've fully matured, if they're dropping and not turning into anything, this is a sign of heat stress. And then browning or blackening of leaves is another sign of heat stress, often um, mistaken as a blight or something of that nature. So if you have a curling of leaves, really poor growth or stunted looking growth, like it's not going past that point, combined with blackening, then it's a sign of heat stress, which is actually what I'm currently having with my tomatoes this year. And many of you have reached out with photos kind of in and around my area, all of which are having that heat stress symptom. I'm using this to charge my camera while filming. I'm gonna say, if you guys ever need something like this to keep you going outdoors in the garden, it's a must. It's like a prepper thing, but I mean, it's useful for every day. So this here is a sign of heat stress. You can see this cupping upwards and you can see it throughout the entire plant here. Now this is very different looking than pesticide stress. I'll actually insert a photo of what pesticide stress looks like. It's different than this. So this is one signal to heat stress. The other signal is just a complete stoppage of growth so we can see this really crisp looking leaf it is brown indicating an actual heat stress rather than a sun stress and you can see almost a stunting and growth again indication of heat and this whole bed in general is actually in direct sun all the time this used to produce gorgeous tomatoes up until this year where it seems like it's just too intense both heat and sun wise if you're enjoying this video be sure to hit that subscribe button regardless if you're in a cold climate or not this channel is for anyone who wants to learn how to garden with science so so number one solution is pretty simple Simple. It's actually just shade cloth, so you can do 30, 40, 50%, kind of up to you for trial and error on this. And that can be installed temporarily to get you over a particular warm period. Yes, shade cloth will filter out light, but do keep in mind ambient heat direct sun heat, or even things like asphalt, cement, raised beds, black containers, cement containers, 
all will affect the very specific microclimate of that plant. So if you have a plant that is on cement, like what mine is, inside of a raised bed in direct sun, that is going to be a heck of a lot warmer than other spaces in my garden that are directly connected to the earth, surrounded maybe by grass, for example, and are in ground rather than raised above it. So you can see how all these factors will actually play, play into that heat stress and therefore having a shade cloth setup that is mobile and you're able to move in days where it's really, really warm and take it off when it's not super hot will help to mitigate that heat stress. Now, number two is actually cooling the plant off physically with water. Use this with caution. Moisture also equals bacterial and potential fungal issues. So if you have issues with blight or powdery mildew, this is not in your best interest. However, if you do not have issues with fungus or bacteria, then cooling the plant off physically on the leaves is a great choice. Avoid using things like ice cubes, for example, on the soil surface. This is a very temporary fix that actually may shock the plant because it's introducing the plant to really extreme temperature fluctuations so i would stay away from that but one way you can cool the soil combined with use the utilization of water is actually with mulch now the mulch you want to have pretty thick one to two inches and the thinner the better so things like braids of blades of grass um, straw that has been shredded in some way avoid things like wood chips because these classically don't cool the soil as effectively as something that's very um, sh shredded and small homogenous type mix. Now if you're using a cloth or a terracotta pot you may want to consider actually sealing that terracotta or putting a bag or some sort of moisture capture around the cloth bag. Ultimately heat can affect it but if we lack moisture due to heat or things are drying out too quickly this can also harm the plant. Now someone did ask the question I thought it was a great question by the way why is it that people in Australia who are much warmer than we are um, can get away without shade cloth or why is it that specific areas can get away with some shade cloth and it really truly comes down to the Sun's intensity combined with the number of hours so where I am, our days are very, very long. <laughs> so it is sunlight at about 5 a.m. and it is still pretty much sunlight here, sometimes till 10 p.m. at night, meaning actual physical shade is very few and far between. Now you combine that with potentially low uh, sun cover or no sun cover. For example, where I am, I believe Saskatoon is one of the sunniest cities in all of Canada. It's like 300, and some days sun guaranteed full full sun which is just crazy and so you can see how that can pattern out if you combine sun intensity and length with heat it just amplifies over time so that's why you need to just kind of use you need to be able to identify not necessarily that your area is bad but that your plants are showing signs of stress from both sun and heat to be able to counteract that accordingly. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you next time.